Alto scores and one. Wendell picks it off, a shot to go. The third time tonight, ball is stripped, the man's going tonight, it's with the football, and he's going to go for a touchdown. Cramier on the header, and it's a goal. Wings it for Bryant, three-pointer, it's good. Swing and a miss, outside pitch, two strikeouts for Neshek. Welcome to a Channel 12 special presentation as we honor the 2016 inductees into our Hall of Fame. The 12 Sports Hall of Fame started in 2004 as a way to honor former outstanding coaches and athletes from the area. Let's begin with a Breck School graduate who humbly credits his family and coaches for a lot of success in athletics and in life. He is one of the finest athletes ever to come out of his high school and a younger brother to a current Hall of Fame member. We welcome 2004 Breck School graduate Liam O'Hagan into the Hall of Fame. David O'Hagan, a free sports star at Breck, was part of our Hall class in 2012. David played a big part in Liam's introduction into sports. We grew up out in Medina, Minnesota, and we actually had our own kind of pasture that we formed into a baseball field. I think we saw Field of Dreams at a young age, and um, we went out there and designed uh, our own diamond. Um, but I remember, you know, the summer days out there, we'd spend four or five hours either working on the field or, or hitting balls, um, sometimes only stopping because we've lost all the, uh, all the baseballs into the uh, cornfield out there. From the cornfields to the fields of play at Brack, the O'Hagans played one year varsity baseball together. David was a senior, Liam an eighth grader. Lenny Sedlock was the Mustangs head coach back then. When he was an eighth grader, he could not play like JV ball. That was against the, that was against the policy at the time. So it was either varsity or nothing. And uh, I think it was kind of, of a big deal at the time. But what I do remember is Liam just stood out. And he lines this one to left field. That'll be in for a base hit. And it's going to scoot past Smith. O'Hagan digging for second. I think we were just having so much fun being on the same team, riding the buses together, warming up and you know, playing on the same uh, diamond together that uh, sometimes I think we lost track uh, of staying concentrated on winning and losing. But I think it was certainly one of the most um, memorable experiences in my athletic career. But Liam quickly grew out of David's shadow. He played four years of varsity football, first as a defensive end and running back, and then a two-year starter at quarterback for the Mustangs while continuing to see a lot of snaps on defense. He allowed us to run defenses that, with him sitting back there with TJ, you know, those two back there at safeties, it, you just always felt you were covered. Um, and he would fly around, just athletically gifted and very driven with great leadership. Um, you know, he didn't let kids around him slouch. It was, it was time to go when Liam was ready to go. Head coach John Thiel was blessed with a lot of football talent in those days. Liam O'Hagan was certainly at the top of the list. O'Hagan throwing to the end zone. Robinson wide open. Touchdown. A two-time All-State player, O'Hagan helped direct the Mustangs to the Class 2A championship in the fall of 2003. I'd say that I'm grateful to have played with so many excellent friends and teammates. Um, and of course the coaches, um, John Thiel stand out and uh, Brett Burgundy on the defensive side. Um, tremendous players, teammates, and coaches. Liam was just as strong in baseball. A five-year all-conference and two-time all-state player, the 2004 Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year was part of two state runner-up teams at Breck. Liam could have played. Liam could have went on. I mean, he, first of all, his bat was Unbelievable at times. I mean, you're gonna, get, you're, he's gonna get on base at least every other time up to the plate. Uh, he threw the heck out of the ball. He could play anywhere. I mean, he could play. I could put him in any position and he could play it. But Liam had his heart set on football. He had several offers and chose Harvard. It was an incredibly easy decision for me. Um, I just had to make sure I got my grades high enough that last semester to get in. O'Hagan was an all Ivy League quarterback for the Crimson as a sophomore. The serious shoulder injury early in his junior year more or less ended his collegiate career. 
Nonetheless, he learned some great lessons at Harvard. Some of the games we played, we weren't always the, the best athletes or, um, you know, we'd play scholarship teams and stuff like that. Um, but we were always the toughest team, and I think for that reason, we were always in the game. Um, and I, I continue to take that with me every day of my life. After taking a year off from the sport, Liam played two years in the United Football League, sort of a minor league of pro ball. His coach for the California Redwoods was the late Dennis Green. He held everybody to this professional standard, and for that, I think everyone respected him very much because he was never going to get in your face or yell at you. He just expected you to be in shape when the, when the season started. He was expecting you to be prepared for every practice and every game. Liam saw his real future, though, was in business. And armed with a degree in finance from Harvard, he set out for Asia, where he's worked and lived since. Now employed by a venture capital firm called Quan Capital. Living in Shanghai certainly is an um, interesting experience. Every day is a new adventure. The people I work with at the firm um, are very, very uh, interesting people from all over the world and all over China. So certainly it's a rewarding experience. His coaches at BRAC called the early 2000s a golden era for athletics at the school. Liam O'Hagan was right in the middle of it all. How lucky can you get to play with that kind of talent, especially at a small school like Breck? I get asked a lot of times who, who was the best athlete you ever saw come out of Breck, and it's tough. Liam was pretty special. Um, when people ask me, he's usually the first one that I speak about. Jay, indeed a great athlete. The one piece I didn't mention is that he was a three-time state qualifier in alpine skiing as well. Yeah, he was a heck of a lot of fun to watch, and as they mentioned, a lot of great athletes at that yeah. time at Brack too. Still to come here on our 12 Sports Hall of Fame special, a former Hopkins football great who is now a prominent figure in education in our area. Welcome back to our 12 Sports Hall of Fame special. You'll find our next inductee roaming the halls as the leader of a school in the northwest suburbs. Prior to that, he was one great athlete. Oh, has gives to Lehan. He was a great high school football player who reached the highest level in his sport. 1998 Hopkins graduate Michael Lehan joins our 12 Sports Hall of Fame. I was honored. I didn't know if I was still relevant to anything anymore. So I, honestly, I, Jay, you and I go back many, many years. And I remember speaking with you when I was at Hopkins. So just the honor and just the thoughtfulness to even consider me for the Hall of Fame for Channel 12 is, uh, is truly an honor. Lehan was a star running back for the Royals, combining great speed with shiftiness and some grit. He was not the kid who grew up playing the sport from Pee Wee's on. You know, it's, it's funny because I didn't start playing football until I was in ninth grade. I, I wanted something to do to stay out of trouble. I wasn't, I wasn't into a whole lot of mischief, but football really just uh, showed up because a lot of my friends uh, played football. Mike was an all-state pick as a senior and rushed for just under 1,500 yards. He also led the Classic Lake in rushing as a junior. Football wasn't his only sport, though. I have a tremendous uh, memories on the football field, on the track. Uh, the one year that I wrestled at Hopkins, it really grew me into a, a young man at that time. It's a, it's a very humbling sport, but uh, Hopkins, I just I have so much affinity uh, for not only the people there and the, and the educational opportunities, but also the support that they provided me. In track, Lehan placed fifth in the state meet in the 100 meters and long jump as a senior. His football skill led to a scholarship from the Gophers where a position change in college was a shocker at first. Yeah, I was recruited as a running back. Uh, after my redshirt freshman year, they said, hey, you know what, why don't you consider playing defensive back? I switched over to defensive back, never playing a snap of defense in my life, and it worked out. Obviously, the coaches knew better than I did. It turned out pretty well for him. Lehan started for three and a half seasons as a defensive back for the Gophers and was selected as a captain in his senior season. To his surprise, Michael zoomed up the NFL draft rankings. Uh, and then Mel Kuyper did his report, and I was ranked the fifth best uh, senior corner in the country. I said, wow, this, is, um, this could be a real thing. And again, as I went, football was something that I started in high school just to stay out of trouble. And that turned into a scholarship at the University of Minnesota. I went to the University of Minnesota saying, hey, this is a great opportunity to get a college degree that I don't have to pay for. And then it became, wow, this could actually be a career. 
He was a fifth round pick by the Cleveland Browns and played three seasons there, followed by three with the Miami Dolphins. In my time in Miami was, you know, you have Zach Thomas and Jason Taylor, some of the best, you know, Hall of Famers, uh, soon to be um, folks in the locker room. That's, that's tremendous as well. It was, a, it was a really great experience. Playing professional football is hard work. It is hard work. While he enjoyed his NFL stint, he knew when it was time to get out. I knew that with a dislocated ankle and four knee surgeries, a broken nose, so shoulder surgery, um, that my body was getting beat up. And at that time I was 28 years old, 29 years old, and I figured, gosh, you know what, there's got to be more uh, to this. Although I'm the principal, it's important to... After hanging up his football cleats, Lehan knew he wanted to work with young people and found his way into the world of education. He's now in his second year as head principal at Osseo High School and loving it. Now I have the great opportunity to work with young people, work with teachers, work with the community, work with my uh, assistant superintendents and superintendent of the school district to make sure that we are providing meaningful opportunities for uh, the young scholars that come to my building and then come to our district as a whole. And Hall of Famer Michael Lehan reflects back on his childhood and school days when he's on the job now. You know, I think about high school sports, and high school sports was certainly a component, a contributing component to, to being a leader that I am today, but I also think about my upbringing, being in foster care, uh, multiple placements, uh, being adopted, some of this uh, adversity that I faced as a young person. So then when I hit the football field and I began uh, playing more sports, that it was a natural progression to when, when uh, adversity came to me. John, I remember how much fun it was to see Mike break into the open field yeah. when he was running back at Hopkins. He was a tough guy to stop. He was, and good to see him now. He's a great role model for the students at Osseo. More to come here on our 12 Sports Hall of Fame, including a talented gymnast from Brooklyn Center. Our third member of the class of 2016 had an amazing five-year high school career as one of the state's best in her sport. She was a high-flying, record-setting gymnast. We welcome 1995 Brooklyn Center High School graduate Alicia Winkler Sinclair into the 12 Sports Hall of Fame. It was exciting, and it was exciting to hear from you, and it's a great honor um, to be with the rest of the Hall of Famers, and it was really an honor and a, a privilege to be here. Winkler started as a gymnast at age four, and after about a decade in club gymnastics, made the switch to high school competition in eighth grade. It was a big decision, um, a really big decision for me. I was at a level nine at the club level, and I kind of was at the point of my life where I was done. I was done going every day, and I just kind of wanted to be a kid again. And so, as an eighth grader, um, I did make the decision to join the Brooklyn Center High School team. Alicia was an instant star, placing fourth in the Class A all-around and third on the floor exercise as an eighth grader. She placed at state a total of 18 times in her five-year career, including a state title on the beam in 1993 and on vault in 1994. She says one year stood out. My sophomore year, um, that was a big year for me. Um, I. Um, placed second at state um, and I placed first place on the balance beam um, and um, yeah that was a big year for me um, also that year I beat Mindy Meyer from Monomedi um, at section so I was the only one to ever beat her um, in her high school career. I would say in the four years I've done it Alicia's clearly top three, uh, and again, the equipment we had back then, the bars didn't go far enough apart and she still did giant swings on them. The, the vault was a little, you know, the old pommel horse to take the handles off, and nowadays they have the big table. Uh, she was doing double twist flips on the floor and it wasn't a spring floor, it was a wrestling mat. Today she would be one of the top kids. I, I still think she'd be a state champion. In fact, with equipment today, she probably would be the all around state champion. While gymnastics was her claim to fame, Winkler was also on a subsection championship volleyball team, part of a school record setting 4x400 relay team and track, and a solid softball player. The chance to play those sports was a big bonus to switching to high school from club gymnastics. I was super excited to be able to do multiple sports um, that I did, yeah, definitely. 
just new group of friends and um, yeah, it was, I would say, um, you know, being in the three sports, you know, definitely helped me, you know, become a better person and, um, and it was fun. Though she had some interest from college coaches, injuries led Alicia to give up gymnastics after high school. My goal was to go to the U of M and do gymnastics there. Um, but as a senior, I hurt my back pretty bad, and so I kind of was at the end of um, at the end of it. So I kind of, in my mind, I made the decision that I wasn't going to continue. She coached at Brooklyn Center and St. Anthony for a time after high school. Now out of the gymnastics world, Alicia's married with an 11-year-old son and three-year-old daughter and works in the advertising business. I've been at Prime Advertising um, in Maple Grove for 11 years um, and um, we are a full service advertising firm um, and I'm one of their assistant sales managers here. And Hall of Famer Alicia Winkler Sinclair doesn't hesitate to say sports and gymnastics in particular helped get her where she is today. You know, it's a team sport and it's an individual sport, but it really taught me a lot about toughness. And um, I never broke any bones, but yeah, you know, your muscles would ache, um, sore back, um, shin splints. I mean, it was tough. And just to have that drive to have to get up and finish your routine or um, it really, really taught me a lot about just being strong and tough and just to not give up. John Alicia was sure a great gymnast and yeah. actually we had quite a few in the area at that time that were very strong. Well, you think of Brooklyn Center, it wasn't a big school, but they had both Alicia and Brian Nault, who was a terrific gymnast and, and helped them have some very good teams there for a time in the mid-90s. Yeah, we congratulate Alicia for coming into our Hall of Fame. Next up, the youngest member of our 2016 Hall of Fame class who had a knack for shining in the big moments. The next new 12 Sports Hall of Famer set a goal early in his athletic career to play Division I basketball. A goal he achieved along with a lot more. Off Farmer left wing and a three. He was a member of two title winning basketball teams at Hopkins High School. We welcome 2007 Hopkins graduate Blake Hoffarber into our 12 Sports Hall of Fame. Blake got his first varsity minutes in eighth grade. Playing with future gophers Dan Coleman and Chris Humphreys, Blake learned a lot as he started to set some long term basketball goals. Well, at that time in eighth grade, obviously my whole life I dreamed of being a D1 college athlete and seeing them go through it and get recruited and see all these big time coaches come in and just see their work ethic and how they prepared for games, it definitely made me realize I need to, you know, prepare and, and get ready for the next level. In 2002, Blake's older brother Adam was the starting point guard on Hopkins State Championship team, the school's first title in nearly five decades. Adam's influence on his kid brother was tremendous. He was a great older brother. I mean, I uh, owe it to him a lot that, you know, he helped me out in all the different facets of my game and was always that older brother that included me in things, but he didn't, you know, necessarily you know, let me win, or he always let me play with his buddies, and that just made me better, and I was used to playing up. That experience helped Blake become a regular in the Hopkins rotation by his freshman year. He averaged 13 points per game as a sophomore. From the corner, Hoffarber! 18 as a junior, and by his senior year was a scoring machine at 25 points per game. Hoffarber with a three to tie it up. Minnesota's Mr. Basketball in 2007. Blake's head coach was Ken Novak Jr., who also happened to be Blake's uncle. Yeah, Blake was a special kid. I mean, he's just he was one of those kids that comes once in a decade, and we've been lucky enough to have a few of those kids. Got unbelievable hand-eye coordination, unbelievable uh, basketball IQ. He's really great with other people, other kids, helping them get better. He definitely was hard on me at times, um, but you know, I think he did it because he cared about you know, he knew my goals and aspirations and wanted me to get to be a better player, but it definitely, I think he was a little harder on me than other players, but I like that. Huff Harbor seemed to thrive on the big shot and the big moment. Seven seconds to Huff Harbor, four seconds, driving to the basket and score! None more famous than what he calls his butt shot.
A desperate and prompt heave from the corner sent Hopkins to a second overtime of the state championship game against Eastview. The Royals won the game and the shot took on a life of its own. I hit that shot, it was unbelievable. Went to double overtime, we ended up winning it. So I win my first state championship. I think that's unbelievable. I remember I went to the locker room, I looked at my cell phone and I must have had 200 phone calls, 60 text messages. I mean, my phone was just ringing off the hook. I went and talked to someone else, they're like, that's gonna be on ESPN tonight. And I was like, no way, it's not gonna be on SportsCenter. And sure enough, it was on SportsCenter that night as the top play. Um, and then all of a sudden the whole SB thing happened. Ah, the SBs. Blake was nominated for and won the play of the year at the awards ceremony in LA. Wow, this is incredible. <laughs> Mix in a Today Show appearance too, and it was a lot for a high school sophomore to take in. It was really fun, but I must admit it was pretty, for a 15 year old kid, it was just a ton of stuff happening, right? And I wasn't the most outgoing guy. I mean, I was outgoing, but I wasn't the most, you know, I wasn't the life of the party and I didn't like the attention as much, but it got me to grow up really fast. The Royals would win another state title in Blake's junior year. Following high school, he was recruited by a number of Division I schools. There was one in particular that he held out for, Minnesota. It was just somewhere I always wanted to play, but unfortunately I never had got a uh, scholarship. It was probably my last scholarship. I got my uh, it was around September of my senior year, actually, and I had offer. I had 35 D1 offers at the time. All these bigger programs, but I, my heart was always just here, and I was fortunate enough to to finally hold off a little bit until I got that scholarship. And you know, from there on out, I loved every minute of it and never looked back. Still, Minnesota's career leader in three-point field goals. Blake was the Gophers' captain his senior year when he was named the U of M's most outstanding male student athlete. After a season of playing professionally in France, Blake returned to Minnesota where he put his finance major and Carlson School of Management degree to work. These days, Blake works for Marsh and McLennan Agency, selling commercial insurance to local corporations. I always tell parents, I mean, whether your kid's good or not, I, I strongly believe they should get into sports because, you know, it teaches them the ups and downs, it teaches them to be collaborative with, with team members, it teaches them to, to, to lead, it teaches them to, to work hard, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. Blake lives in the West Metro now with his wife Jordan. The couple were married in August. And of course, the house they bought came with a basketball hoop in the driveway. Blake still attends a lot of high school and college games at his alma maters and can't see ever getting too far away from the sport he's lived and breathed for two decades. Minnesota is a pretty small basketball community. It's a, a lot of talent here, but it's fun. You know, you go to these games and you see people, whether it was from when you were a little kid or you played with them in high school or, you know, you, you saw them in the stands and when I played in college, it's just, it's fun to go back and, and watch the kids play and, you know, watch one of the things that you love in your life. Jay was sure great to catch up with Blake again. And oh, Uncle Ken may be a little bit biased. He talked to me about what a great left-handed pitcher Blake was. He thought he could have had a future in baseball too, but he couldn't just get the, the two sports to mesh as he got older. That's interesting to know. And uh, knowing Blake and seeing him play basketball, it really doesn't surprise me. He's one of those great uh, all-around athletes, I think, too. Well, that will wrap up a great class of 2016 here into our Hall of Fame. We want to give special thanks to our great production team, including Roger Larson, Matt Kilby, Jason Melillo, and David Dobrin for helping to put all of this together. And we also want to thank you very much for watching our Sports Jam Channel 12 Hall of Fame special.